So in this lecture, we're going to model up the soft jaw lathe project. This is module six. This is the final project for the, the MACT 160 class. If I go to the home page, and if I go down to modules, this will be a module six soft jaw lathe. Module six soft jaw lathe discussion. And I'm looking at the drawing for this part. This is a soft jaw that you would find on an ST10 lathe, a uh, Haas lathe. We have one of these, uh, we used to have one at City College and we used to make these late, make these jaws. And then we would cut into them so that we could hold on to different diameter shaped parts. So I'm gonna model this up. And then the next lecture, we are going to start machining this. So I'm looking at this part. And I'm looking at the base profile or the base, the, the view that's gonna give me the most information for the basic shape of the part. And I'm seeing this view here. I'll call this the top view. And I'm thinking to model up this part, I'm gonna draw a 2D representation of what I see in this view. So different ways to go about doing it. If you watch the videos that I created from the previous semesters, I might do it slightly different. So I'm gonna start by drawing a rectangular shape that measures 2.76 by 1.1. I'm gonna draw in some construction geometry to create these lines that rep represent these chamfers. And then I'm gonna create some circles to represent the drilled and counterboard holes. So let's do that. Let's go back in the master cam. I'm going to look at it from a top view. So right click, top. To see my coordinate system, I'll hit Alt F9. Or if I go to view, I can toggle out the visibility of the coordinate system with the in the display section, then I'll select show nomens. Let's start by drawing a center rectangle that measures 2.76 by 1.1. Before I do that, I'll go to the home tab. I'm looking at the wireframe color. I'm making sure that the wireframe color is something that I can see with my current background color. So I'm using this green color. I'll go to wireframe. Under rectangle, you'll find rectangular shapes. Brings up the parameters page for the rectangular shape tool. I'm going to center the rectangle on the origin. The width is 2.76. And the height is going to be 1.1. You put in 1.76. So my bad. So that's going to be, and as soon as I hit enter, I can see on the, I can see the preview of the rectangular shape. It's pretty obvious that that is not what I'm looking for. So at that point, I would probably go back and check, recheck my numbers. Good catch. So 2.76. I'll let my cursor lock onto the origin and that will place that rectangular shape. And it's so always, and while it's still blue, you can make changes to that rectangular shape. So 2.76 by 1.1, see how it's still live. So it was pretty straightforward that uh, it was the wrong shape. It was definitely not proportionate. So 2.76 by 1.1, once you place that rectangular shape, select okay to exit the tool and finalize the creation of that rectangular shape. I'll go back to the drawing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in some construction geometry. I'm going to draw in a center line from the midpoint to the midpoint. And then I'm going to offset it in both directions, a distance of 0.125, half of this value. So this is what I'm thinking. I'll go to wireframe, line endpoints. My auto cursor is active. So when I position my cursor close to the midpoint of this line, you see how it locks onto it? When you see it lock onto the midpoint, left click, and then position your cursor over here. When you see the cursor lock onto the midpoint of this line, left click, and then select OK to exit the tool. I'm going to offset this new line in both directions, a distance of 0.125, and that value is coming from this dimension here. I'm just dividing it by two. So I drew in a line. 
on the midpoint here. I'm going to offset it in both directions. Half, half of this 0.125. In the wireframe tab or under the wireframe tab, I'll go to offset. I'll select the line for the distance. It's actually it's asking me to indicate the offset direction. It doesn't matter if you select above it or below it. We're ultimately going to use both sides. So I selected above it. You can see a preview of the offset for a distance of one. Set the value to 0.125 and hit enter. I'm going to need this offset in both directions or on both sides. And if I wanted to, I could use the move option and that will remove the need to delete that construction line, that centered one. From here, here I'll select okay. 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 I'm now gonna offset this line to the left, a distance equal to 0.2. From the wireframe tab, offset, we're being prompted to select the line It's still holding on to the values that we used from the previous offset. So this time I'll change it back to copy. I'll select selected side. And you might have to flip the directions depending on which one works for you. In my case, I want to use selected side. I'm offsetting it back into the part or inboard. And for the distance, set it to 0.2. And then select OK. Master cam is assigned temporary colors to the original and to the result of that offset. So right click, clear colors. I'm now gonna draw in a line from this endpoint to this endpoint, and then from this endpoint to this endpoint. We're creating this edge and this edge. So I'll go to wireframe, line endpoints. I'll select this edge or this endpoint, and then I'll select this endpoint, and then I'll select this endpoint, and then I'll select this endpoint. And from here, I'll select okay to exit the tool. I no longer need this line, so I can select it and delete it. I no longer need this line, I'll select it and delete it. This line, select it and delete it. I have to trim back these lines. I don't no, no longer need them, so I'll go to wireframe, divide, and the way, that the, the way that this tool works, if you position your cursor over something, it takes on that dashed glowing look and, select, and if you left click on it, it becomes trimmed away. So I use the divide tool for that particular trim. I can select okay to exit the tool. And this would be a good time for me to save my work. I've got a little bit of time invested in this project. I'm going to create a folder called Softjaw Lathe or Softjaw ST10 Lathe. And then I'm going to save the Mastercam file to that folder with the same name. So I'll go File, Save. I'll navigate to my class folder. Inside the class folder, I'll create a new folder. I'll call this soft jaw ST10 lathe. And then inside that folder, I'll save the master cam file with the same name. So You're done saving it. You can check the location, make sure it's named correctly and make sure it's saved to the correct location. So Softjaw ST10 lathe, save to the Softjaw ST10 lathe folder and everything else looks good. From here, I'm going to draw in two circles and I'm gonna position them relative to the lower left corner. Now they don't give us a dimension from this bottom edge to the center of the drilled holes, the drilled and counterboard holes. But we have this center line with this CL symbol 
running right through the center of these holes. And it's centered on the part. So the distance from this bottom edge to the center of this drilled in, this drilled in counterboard hole is half of this value, 0 0.6, or I'm sorry, 0 0.55. I'm going to position a point relative to the lower left corner. It's going to be 0 0.47 along the x-axis and then 0 0.55 along the y-axis. To do that, I'll go to the wireframe tab. I'll select point position. It says create point position. I want to place a point relative to the lower left corner. To do that, hold your shift key in, hold your shift key in, let your cursor lock on to the bottom left corner. When you see it lock into position, left click, you'll now see this, contr this axis control appear. Different ways you can use this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to left click on the sphere. And when I do that, you'll see this field pop up and it will allow me to enter an X, Y, and a Z coordinate. I'm going to type in the X value. I'm going to type in the Y value. I'll leave the Z value blank and that'll be understood at zero or it understands that it is zero. So 0 0.47, 0 0.55 is what I'm looking for. So 0.47, that's my X value, comma, 0.55, that's my Y value. And I think I typed in a period or a decimal place. So comma, 0.55, enter. I'll hit enter a second time. Then I'll hit enter a third time to place that point. I could type in the next value. It's 0.787 from center to center. So to place the second point, what I'll do, once again, I'll hold the shift key down. I'll let my cursor lock on to the origin. You'll see the axis control become visible. Left click on the sphere, 0.747, comma, zero, comma, zero. Enter, enter, and enter. I accidentally typed that in incorrectly. It's 0.787. I typed in 0.747. To double check that, go to home, analyze distance. Select the first point, select the second point, 747. So I typed that in incorrectly. I'll exit, I'll delete that point. I'm going to copy this point, a distance of 0.787 to the right. So I select it. I'll go to transform, translate. I'm going to copy it. And then the delta or the X value is 0.787, enter once, enter twice, enter a third time. And actually, I didn't even need to do that. I just select OK. To clear the colors, right click, clear colors. And let's check that value again. We're going to dimension everything to verify that everything is correct. But I want to make sure I've gotten the right location before I start placing more geometry. So I'll go to home. Analyze distance. Select this point. Select that point. And I pre-selected in this case. So home. Analyze distance. Point the point. And now you can see that the X value is correct. So 0.787. Close out of here. And I'll save my work. How's everyone doing? Nice. Okay. For the time being, I don't need to see my coordinate system. So what I'll do, I'll go to view and just toggle off the visibility. We're going to draw in two circles. We're going to draw in, I'm sorry, we're going to draw in two sets of circles. The first diameter represents the drilled hole, 0 0.43. And then the second diameter or the larger diameter represents the counterboard diameter, 0.67. So let's start by drawing in 2.43 diameter circles. I'll go to wireframe, circle center point. In the diameter field, type in 0.43. I 
I hit enter and then I move my cursor into the graphics area. You see a preview of that circle. Before you place anything, lock the value down. And now you can place multiples. I'll let my cursor lock onto this point, left click. And then I'll let my cursor lock onto this point, left click. To finalize the creation of these two circles, hit the OK and create new operation. Change the diameter value to 0.67. The value is still locked down. I move my cursor into the graphics area. I can now place a circle at this point and at this point. And then I'll select OK. This would be a good time for me to save my work. So I'll go to File, Save. And then we'll go back to the project page to see where we need to go to next. So I have a 2D representation of the part in this view. There are some other things that we're going to need to do, but we're going to need to create different coordinate systems. And in the process of modeling this up, we're going to need to actually create some solid geometry before we create some of the other wireframe geometry. So this would be a good time for us to create our levels, dimension the part, and verify that what we have on our screen is correct. So let's do that. I'll go back in the master cam. I'm going to bring up the level manager. I'll go to view, managers, levels. Let's create the default levels that we use. Now, I could import the levels from a different project. Have I shown you guys how to do that yet? I think I went over how to export existing levels and then save them as a um, Excel file. Yeah, I think so. So if I go to the level manager, and I right click on my screen and then go to import named levels. And I go to my class folder. Let's do that. Go to C 2021 MAC 2160. And I'm not seeing any, I'm not seeing the file that the CSV, the CSV file that I'm looking for. So let's do this. I want you guys to open up the last project that we worked on. Go to file. So first off, save your work, file, save, and go file, open, and open up the servo housing project. And then open up the level manager. Now this project had a couple additional levels attached to it or created. What I would like to do is I would like to save all of these levels so that I can use them for import in any addition or any other master camp file. So watch how I do this. I've got, I've already got my levels named. This is why I want you to open up an existing file. We have our default levels for the class. If I right click in the level manager from the flyout menu, I'll select export named levels. Navigate to your class folder. And I'm going to call this default levels MACT 160. Then select save. And that's all we're doing. We're just saving these levels. So once again, right click in the level manager, export named levels, export them to the class folder. I called them, or I called the CSV file default levels 160 or default levels of MACT 160. Yeah, I don't need to overwrite them. So once you do that, go back to the new master cam file that we're working on. File, open. Softjaw SD10 lathe. I don't need to save this. So now I'm back in today's project or the project that we started today. Inside the level manager, I have one level by default. 
It doesn't have a name by default and it has 13 entities. That's what we've, that is what we've created so far. Inside the level manager, right click from the flyout menu, select import named levels, navigate to your class folder or to wherever you saved that CSV file. Default levels, MACT160, open it up and it imports all of those levels. And you'll notice it just has the names and the number. It doesn't have any geometry attached or within those levels. So the only level that should have anything on it is the solid support geometry, the solid support geometry level, level one. So how's everyone doing with that? Okay. From here, I would like to I would like to question. Yes, I have sir. only uh, 12 entities for mine. Okay. Um maybe I created something extra. I should have one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I've got something extra. Yeah, there should only be there's six lines, four circles, and two points. So let me do this. Go. Uh, home, delete duplicates. I've got an extra point. I'll select OK. And now I've got 12. Good, good catch on that. So uh, when I was having difficulty or when I placed that point incorrectly, or if I maybe I demonstrated how to do it twice, I don't recall, but I had that extra point. So good catch. There should only be 12 entities. So from here, what we want to do is we want to verify that this is correct. And what I'll do in this case is I'll dimension or I'll create the dimensions that I see on the blueprint. They don't need to be exact. Uh, just get them close. So back inside of master cam, I'll make the dimensions level, the active level. I'm going to change the wireframe color to red. And then I'll use the smart dimension tool to dimension the part. I'll go to drafting, smart dimension. Once again, it doesn't need to be perfect, but I will use the drawing as a reference. I'll select this line and this line to create the 2.76 dimension. So I'm selecting this line and that line. Place the dimension approximately where it is on the blueprint. So I got 2.76 for the overall length. For the height, the distance from this edge to this edge, 1.1. So I'll select this line. I'll select this line, pull the dimension off to the left, 1.1. The distance from this edge to the center of the drilled and counterboard hole. 4, uh, 0.47, so I'll select this line. I'll select this point or the center. I got 0.47. The distance from center to center along the x-axis is point, it should be 0 0.787. So I'll select this center point and this center point. I got 0.787. There's no dimension from this edge to the center of these holes, but I'm gonna dimension it anyway. It should be half of this value, 0.55. So if I select this line, then I select this point or this center point, that should be 0.55. The distance from point to point or the length of this surface right here should be 0.25. I select this line, pull the dimension off to the right, 0.25. And then the distance from this edge to this point is 0 0.2. Start by selecting the line. Do not select the point. You select the line, and then you select the point. It's going to lock in the extension lines to a vertical or horizontal. And in this case, I'm looking for vertical on the extension line, so 0 0.2. I look at the blueprint. 
I can also dimension the circles. One's going to be at 0.43. The other one, other one will be at 0.4 or 0.67. So if I select this circle, I'm going to flip the arrow, but with, with the A key, and I'll select this circle. I'll select OK. And I believe that's all the dimensions that I need to create from this view. So just checking to make sure that my 2D geometry or my 2D representation of the part is correct. I believe it is. So from here, I'm going to make the solid model level, the active level. I'll make the dimensions level invisible. I can look at the part from an isometric view. And while I'm here, I could put the points on level five. To do that, I can select the points. So left click on both the points, go to the home tab in the organize section, select change level. I'm going to move the selected items to level five. So in my case, I have to deselect, use active level. And then in the number field, select the level that you would like to move the points to and hit enter. And now I have two entities on level five. I'm going to leave them visible for the time being. How's everyone doing? Good. Good. Nice. Okay. Look at it from an isometric view. I'm actually going to make the coordinate system visible again, just so I have an idea of which way, which direction the axes are pointing. So I'll go to view and display or in the display section, I'll select show nomens. I'm going to extrude the outside profile in the negative Z and the distance that I extrude it will be defined by this dimension 1.25. So I'll go back to master cam. The solid model level is the active level. I'm going to check the solid color. I don't want the color to match at the wire for geometry. So I'm gonna change this up a little bit. I'll expand the solid color. I'm going to use this blue color right here. Anything or any solid that I create is gonna take on this color at this time. So from here, I'll go to solids, extrude, brings up the wireframe chaining dialog box. I have C plane selection or C plane selected and the selection method is set to chain. I'll select one of the lines that represents the outside profile. All connected entities should become selected. I'll select okay. And the default extrusion is going in the positive Z for a distance of one inch. I'll start by flipping the direction and then I'll change the distance to 1.25. Double check the value of the distance length, make sure it's being extruded in the correct direction. My coordinate system is sitting on the top of the part. So from here, I'll select okay. I'll save my work. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create the drilled and counterboard holes that go all the way through the part. Now we could use the 2D geometry that's on my screen to create these two features. I'm actually going to use the hole tool under the solid tab or solids tab. We're going to create counterbores that go all the way through the part. The drill through is going to measure 0.43 in diameter, and then the counter bore is going to be 0.6 in diameter for a depth of 0.71. So we're going to reference this information when we define the drilled and counter board holes. From the solids tab, go to hole. It says use panel to modify hole settings. For type, I'll set it to counter bore. In the diameter field, set the diameter to 
This is for the hole that goes all the way through the part for the counterbore diameter. Change this to 0 0.67. And then for the depth of the counterbore, change it to 0 0.71. So hole style, counterbore, diameter is 0.43, counterbore diameter is 0.67, counterbore depth is 0.71. For the depth, the distance default is set to one inch, but this is gonna go all the way through. So check or select through all, and then leave top chamfer unchecked. So we defined what the drilled and counterbolt holes are going to be. We now have to place them. In the or above or below the position field, select add position. It says select top of hole locations, press anyone done. So you could select the center point or you can select the circles. Then it knows to select the center of the circle. I'm going to select this circle and this circle. And then I'll hit enter. My view is currently set to translucent so I can see the drilled and counterboard hole going all the way through the part. I change to a non-translucent view. You have to tell me your view to see what's going on. That appears to be correct. So from here, I'll select okay to exit the hole tool. I can look at it from my symmetric view. I can fit the screen. And this would be a good time for me to save my work. So I'll go to File, Save. And I'm now ready to move on to the next step. How's everyone doing? Good. Good. All good? Nice. OK. Let's do this. Go back to the project page. We need to create a few cuts and then we need to create the teeth or the serrated, the serrations that represent, or the serration that represents the teeth. Different ways we can approach doing this. I'm going to start by drawing in a rectangle that measures 0.39 by 0.1. We're gonna to have to change our construction plane. We're currently set to the top construction plane. Anything we create, rectangles, any 2 any 2 g any 2D geometry is going to be planar to the current coordinate system or the current construction plane. We need to set our construction plane to the front. And then we're gonna draw a rectangle shape that measures 0.39 by 0.1. Go back to master cam. Look at it from an isometric view. And then go down to the bottom part of your screen and where it says C plane, see how it's currently set the top? If you click on it, it expands or a menu pops up. Set it to front. And if your coordinate system is visible, you'll see it rotate and you can now see that the X, Y plane of the current construction plane is planar with this front face right here. And that's what we want. We're gonna draw in a rectangular shape that measures 0.39 by 0.1. We're gonna set the anchor point to the bottom right corner. And then we're gonna lock onto the midpoint of this edge. So this is what I'm thinking. Go to wireframe. Use the rectangular shapes tool. Set the origin to the bottom right. For the width, set it to 0.39. And then for the height, set it to 0.1. And when you hit enter, move your cursor into the graphics area, you'll see a preview of that rectangular shape. Origin is set to the bottom right. What you can do you want, you can zoom in. I'm letting my cursor lock on to the midpoint of this edge right here. And if you can't see what's going on, you can change over to a wireframe view. 
let your cursor lock on to the midpoint of this edge. Left click and then select OK. Now I changed the color to red. What I'll end up doing is I'll end up selecting all the wireframe geometry and changing it to the color green when it's all said and done. I'll have to reposition it. I'll have to move it to the correct level also. Once you get this rectangular shape drawn in, we're gonna do an extruded cut in both directions, through all both directions. Go to solids, go to extrude. The wireframe, uh, the wireframe chaining dialog box appears. I'm going to select one of the edges of that new rectangular shape. The entire rectangle becomes selected. I'll select okay. Inside the solid extrude parameters page, for the type, select cut body. And then I want you to go all the way down to the bottom and select through all, both directions. If you change over to a shaded view, it's a little bit easier to see what's going on. So we're just cutting away or cutting a relief on this bottom edge or this bottom corner of the soft jaw. From here, select OK. Right click isometric. Right click fit. If you need to unzoom or you need to zoom out a little bit, you can do that. And this would be a good time for us to save our work. How's everyone doing? Uh, Professor, you, you extruded all the way through, right? Through yeah, all. I did a, I did a um, cut body through all both directions. Got it. Thanks. Nice. How's everyone else doing? All right. The next thing we're going to do, we're going to cut the slot that runs all the way through the middle or the bottom edge of the part or the bottom face of the part. And the way these things work, there's a T nut that fits in this slot right here. And it's a pretty precise fit. So that's why you see this tight or this tight tolerance right here. The T nut is used to position it on the chuck. So that it needs to be relatively accurate. So we're going to draw it in at the nominal value 0.72. And then when, when we machine it, we can adjust with cutter comp on how, you know, to bring it, bring it into the final dimension. So what we're going to do now is we're going to draw in a rectangular shape that measures 0.472 by 0.2. I'm going to center it on this edge right here, this back face midpoint of this midpoint of this edge. We're going to have to create, we're going to have to change our construction plane again so that the plane, the XY plane is planar with this face. I can use the right plane or I can use the left plane in this case. Let's use the left plane. If you're looking at it from a default isometric view, this would be the left face. This would be the right face. You could use either one in this case, but let's use the left construction plane. So I'll come down to the C plane again, select it, right, left, either one will work. So I'm gonna select the left. If you look at the coordinate system on our screen, you can now see that the XY plane, XY, is planar with this face right here. We're gonna draw in a rectangular shape and center it on the midpoint of this edge. The rectangular shape will measure 0.472 by 0.2. So go to wireframe, rectangular shapes. This time set the origin to the bottom middle. middle. The X value will be 0.472. The height will be 0.2. This information is coming from this dimension and this dimension. When you hit enter after entering the height value, move your cursor into the graphics area, you'll see a preview. The rectangle should be planar with this face. 
I'll position my cursor close to this edge. You see it lock onto the midpoint, left click. Once you place it, you can exit the tool by selecting OK. We're going to use the extrude tool to cut out the material that represents the slot. We're going to cut out the material to create the slot. So once you place a rectangular shape, you can go to solid extrude. Brings up the wireframe chaining dialog box. I'll select one of the edges that represents the rectangular shape. I'll select OK. And now because it's holding on the values from the previous or from the last time that we use this tool, it's doing a cut body through all both directions. Now I don't need it in both directions, but it's not causing any issues either. So um, if you deselect both directions and it suddenly disappears, you might just have to flip the direction, but that would be with this icon right there. So I've got through all, if it disappears, reverse the direction. You should see that cut go all the way through the part. Once you verify that it's correct, you can select OK. You can look at it from an isometric view. And this would be a good time for us to save our work. How's everyone doing? This next one will be interesting. Is everyone good up to this point? Because I'm going to lose some people on this next step. I'm good. Good? All right, good cool. I, pre I appreciate the feedback. So what we got to do next, we have to draw. Let's see here if I can zoom in without too much headache. There we go. We're going to draw a triangle. And this triangle is going to represent one of the teeth for this series of teeth. And this information is a little confusing, so I'm going to step you guys through it. The number that's most important, or the two numbers that are most important, are the 60 degrees and this 0 0.0591. The 0 0.0591 is the pitch of these teeth, or the pitch of this series of teeth. The spacing from one tooth to the next is 0 0.0591. Now, this is a really ugly number. Reason being is what I mean by ugly is it's not anything we recognize as a, um, a clean, what I refer to as clean numbers. What you're seeing here is a decimal equivalent of a metric conversion. The pitch from one tooth to the other is in millimeters. It's 1.5 millimeters. This jaw was designed for a chuck that was manufactured in Japan. So every, all the measurements, that's why you're not seeing any really clean numbers. They're all kind of ugly. They are approximations of the metric equivalents or their conversions for lack of a better word. So I'm going to draw in a rectangular shape and I'll show you another direction. I'm going to draw in a triangle and then we're going to place it. We're going to make a cut and then we're going to translate or we're going to create a pattern from that cut. So we're going to start by drawing one instance of this cut or of this tooth off of the part. So this is what I'm thinking. I want you to change your construction plane back to front. So first off, C plane is set to front. And then in your graphics area, right click, look at it from the front view. We're gonna draw a triangle. I'm gonna zoom in and out. I'm gonna draw a triangle off to the left of the part. And it's gonna be very, it's not gonna be a very large triangle. So I'm zooming into this corner. Let's start by drawing a vertical line. Go to wireframe, line endpoint, click in space. I don't, I don't want this on the part. So click off of the part, left click to create one point. Let's 
Let the second point snap into a perpendicular or vertical position. And then on the left side of your screen, you see the length? Approximate the length at say 0.15, not 1.5, 0.15. It's gonna be a very short line. So I'm drawing a vertical line that has a length of, about, of approximately 0.15. It does not need to be exact. So left click, I've got my line and then I'll select, okay. So all we did is draw a short vertical line to the left of our part. Is everyone good with that? All right. We're now going to copy rotate this line 30 degrees to the right and to the left. We'll see if we can do it in one step. I'm gonna to go to transform. I'm gonna to go to rotate. It's asking us to select the line or select entities that rotate, select the line, select end selection. For rotation center point, now this is important. Rotation center point, select, reselect. And then select or let your cursor lock on to the top end point. You can now see that we've got the pivot point at the top endpoint. Now back in the parameters or back inside the parameters for this rotate tool, click in the angle field and type in 30. If you look at the drawing, the angle is 60 degrees and we drew in a vertical line. So what we're doing is we're drawing in a vertical line and then we're gonna rotate that line 30 degrees in both directions to, to get a total angle of 60 degrees. So I've got 30 degrees. If I scroll down for direction, select both. And once you do that, if everything looks correct, you can select OK. How's everyone doing? Everyone good? Yeah. Good. Okay. Now there's a bunch of different ways to do this. This is just a way that I find it easiest to guide a bunch of people, you know, get a bunch of people through. Um, there are other ways to do it. This is just an easier way when you're trying to explain it to a group of people or demonstrate it to a group of people. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw in a horizontal line. I'll go to wireframe, line endpoint. Let your cursor lock on to the top endpoint of the triangle or the top end of the pyramid. Let the line snap into a horizontal position. Once again, the length does not matter. Once you see it snap into a horizontal position, left click, select OK. I'm now gonna translate or offset this line 50 thousandths of an inch. The height of this tooth is 0.05. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to wireframe. You can go to offset. Set the offset distance to 0 0.05. Select this line, select below, and then select OK. Now, if you look at it, this thing is very, very small. We drew this vertical line in at about 0.15. This tooth profile is very small. It's about 50 thousandths tall. I no longer need this line so I can delete it. I no longer need this line so I can delete it. I've got these three lines. I need to trim them back. So if I go to the wireframe tab, trim to entities, 
I'm going to use type, set to trim, trim two entities. You're going to select the parts of the lines that you want to keep. And actually, I kind of went about this the wrong way, but oh, there we go. And then select this part and this part. Select, okay, I'll undo that, or I'll do it again. So I've got these three lines. I need to trim them to each other. So I'll go to trim to entities. I'm using the trim to entities method. I can select this line. I want to keep this part of the line. I want to see, I want to keep this part of the line. Then I'll do the same thing over here. I'll select this line here, and then I can select this line. And now I've got a uh, triangle with no overlapping entities. And that's going to represent one tooth, or that is the profile for one tooth. How's everyone doing? Everyone okay? Anyone need to uh, need me to take a look at their part, or do you need a moment? Uh, I'm having some issues. Um, would you like me to take a look at it, or you just want me want me to do it again? I think if you did it again, like. Okay. I, I can't seem to select the top point of my vertical line. And uh, it, is your auto cursor turned on? Do me, can you see my screen? Yep. Yeah, go to uh, selection settings. And is your auto cursor endpoint active? Uh, where's selection settings? Sorry. It's the, so there's this menu bar in the center of your graphics area, and it looks like a gear selection settings. Uh, looks like point is the only thing that's highlighted. So the point's the only one that's uh, checked. Yeah. So um, select restore defaults and then add quadrant. Uh, hold on. It's not letting me get to the. Are you in the middle of a tool? Hit Hit escape. Okay. And then you see where I'm clicking where it says selection settings is, is a plus with a gear sign yep. or a gear symbol. Now you said only the point was checked. Uh, so in the drop down, it showed only the point highlighted, but everything is selected at this point. Okay. So uh, maybe did you actually go to the auto cursor? Because if you drop down the auto cursor and select point, it's kind of like a filter, even though you have all those set or all those active, once you go to this menu, it isolates just the point snap. Does that make sense? Yeah, that, that's what it was showing me. Okay, cool. So yeah, so now you should be able to draw in a line if you go to line endpoint and your auto cursor should lock on to that top endpoint. All right, let's see. Rotate. And I can do it again. It'll, it'll, I'll just do it a little bit quicker. Yeah, so when I pick the transform uh, for the rotate, all it will allow me to do is select the line instead of the top point of the line. Oh, oh that reason being, let me show you. I, I know, I think, I believe, I think I know where you're having an issue. So watch how I do this. So I'm going to draw on a line real quick. And <clears throat> around 150,000 length, right? Yep. Now we want to rotate this, but the pivot point by default is the origin. So that's where I think you're having a problem. If I go to a wireframe and I go to, let's just go to transform, rotate, I select it. So it says select entities, rotate, I select it. And then I select end selection. Now you can't lock onto the endpoint, right? Yeah. Go to rotation center point. This is critical. Uh, the rotation center point, reselect. Cause right now, it wants to revolve it or rotate it about the, the default origin, right? Yep. You see that? So go to rotation center point, reselect. Now let your cursor lock on to the endpoint. Okay. And change the angle to 30. Angle is 30. And then go down to direction and select both. Yep. Looks good. If it looks good, select the OK button. Okay. You should have three lines, two angled lines. 
We're now going to go back to the line tool. So go to um, wireframe line endpoint. We're going to draw in a horizontal line. Lock the first point onto the top of the triangle. Once again, the length is not important. Just make sure that it snaps into a horizontal position. Once you see it snap into position, left click. Okay. Then you can select OK to exit the tool. We no longer need this vertical one, so you can select it and delete it. Okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to offset this line 0 0.05 down. So if I go to uh, Transform, Translate, or you could use the offset tool. There's different ways to do it. Select this line. Okay. And in the Y, actually, I need to hit end selection. And then in the Y, minus 0 0.05 or 0 0.05 and just flip the direction. All good? Whoops. Minus 0 0.05. F. Minus no, and you do it. The other thing is just other option is 0 0.05, and then just both sides or opposite side. You can use this option down here. And I think maybe I started with my because it ends up uh, below my triangle. I think maybe how far I, below, like or terribly, like a, a huge distance or. Uh, a, a small distance below it. So I that's, think that's fine. My... No, that's per it, it doesn't matter. It'll be perfectly fine. Okay. So I watch out um, because the trim tool is going to trim everything to it. And uh, let, let's do this. Let me do it and then we'll share your screen and I'll guide you through on how to do yours. All right. Sure. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to trim these back. I'm going to go to wireframe. I'm going to go to trim to entities. Trim two entities. So type is trim, method trim two entities. Now with this tool, you want to you want to select on the part of the line or the part of the piece being trimmed that you would like to keep. So I want to keep this part of the line, keep this part of the line. Then I want to keep this part and that part. And I don't need this, so if I just select it, actually it didn't delete it. So I just while it's selected, hit delete. So that's the profile of one tooth. Now, what we'll do is we'll take a look at, um, hold on a second. Zach, that was you, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So let's take a look at Zach's screen. If I can figure out how to share. Okay, so Zach, can you share your screen with us, please? Share. Can you see it? Uh, not yet. Hold on. Not seeing it. Um, yeah, it should be a green icon on the bottom of your screen. Yeah, I picked share screen and I'm picking my... You can share the screen or you can share the app. Uh, try to share the screen and make sure... You... Does it show now? I'm not seeing it. Is anyone else seeing Zach's screen? Tells me I'm sharing my screen. Um, can I get some feedback from someone else? Is anyone else seeing Zach's screen? I, can't uh, see I don't mine. see it. I don't uh, see it. All right, let me stop again and try again. You should be able to share it. I got to change it to multiple participants. Share. I like it's telling me I'm sharing my screen. Um, I don't it could know. be Zoom. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's a, it's not a problem. Uh, so what you got to do is you need to go to the trim tool, and trim two entities, and you're going to select on the lines and trim them to each other. So even though they don't overlap or if they come up a little bit short, that tool will bridge the gap. Does that make sense? Okay. Try it and see what happens. I'm going to go back to sharing my screen. Um, 
And I'm going to just draw it again real quick on my screen. So there's a, a short line. And if I go to transform, rotate, So Zach, can you see my screen? Yeah. So you got something like what 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 if you see my screen, is this similar to what you're seeing on yours? Uh I think I got it. I got it down to the triangle after messing with the trim two entities, it created the whole triangle out. Perfect. Yeah, that's what and I believe I've uh simulated your situation where this line doesn't really overlap the angled lines. Yep. That's exactly cool thing. Yeah. So the cool thing about this tool it'll bridge the gap. So if I select here and I select here, you see how it bridged it? Yeah. Uh, and then do it here and here. Happen. So that's, that's uh, you know, it's, the more you use the software, the more familiar you'll be, you'll be, you'll be with what you can get away with and what it will allow you to do. So that's just, you know, that, that particular tool will work in both situations where it's overlapping or if it comes up short. Okay. Yeah, that worked perfectly. All right, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. So you guys should be able to see my screen, right? Now, what I did, if you look at it from a front view, I'm just tumbling my view a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to move this triangle from this endpoint to this endpoint. And then I'm going to move it again for 10 thousandths of an inch. Now, I've worked with this drawing enough. I know what's going on here. This 10 thou is from the edge to the bottom left corner of the, tr the tooth. And then, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start by moving this profile from th by this endpoint to this endpoint. And we're gonna use a translate tool to do that. So is everyone good up to this point? This is another tricky, tricky thing. Yep. Perfect, so I rotated my view a little bit. So from a front view, I just held my scroll wheel down. I tumbled my view. We're going to move this triangle from this endpoint to this endpoint. I'll go to transform, translate, select the triangle, select end selection, and I'm going to use the vector from two method. So be careful. There's the reselect icon exists in two locations. Go to vector from two. Select the reselect button under the vector from to. And it says select the point to translate from. Let your cursor lock onto the bottom left corner of the triangle. And then let your cursor lock onto the bottom left corner of the part like you see on my screen. I'm going to use the move method. You can see that the triangle has been moved to the lower left corner of this face right here, I'll select OK. How's everyone doing? Good. Nice. We now need to move that same triangle to the right along this edge, a distance of 0 0.01. So I'll go to transform again, translate, to reselect a triangle, I'm just going to use this icon right here, select all result entities. Notice how it's got this temporary color assigned to it. If I select, if I select the select all result entities icon, the triangle becomes selected again. I'll select end selection. This time I want to move it along the x-axis a distance of 0 0.01. So back in the parameters for the translate tool, in the X field, type in 0 0.01, hit enter. You'll see the pre you'll see a preview of that triangle being moved. If everything looks correct, select OK to exit the tool. So we moved that triangle twice. We moved it from endpoint to endpoint, and then we moved it along that edge in the X axis for a distance of 0 0.01. How's everyone doing?
Professor, I got all mixed up and um, I'm kind of stuck now. You're gonna, you're gonna what? I got all mixed up the sides, like I put it on the other side. Okay. Yeah. So can I fix it? I think so. Let me see your. May I see your screen? Yes. Give me a second. Okay. There it is. Almost. Hold on one second. Okay, do me a favor. Um, look at it from an isometric view. Change over to a translucent view. Oh, you're in translucent. That's fine. Yeah. I can see it. So tumble it a little bit. It's like on this side. Yeah, that's okay. Zoom into it. Um, that's fine. We can, I can work with that. Change to a, um, do, go to the right view, right view. I'm sorry. Yeah. Right. Or, I'm sorry, front, front, my bad. Front view. Change to a wireframe view. Go all the way to the, to the left, two more. Yeah, right there. So now I want you to um, select, do a window select where you're just capturing the wireframe triangle. No, start on the left side of the part, go to the left. Up a little bit. Up. Yeah, that works perfect. Hit end selection. Now along the x-axis, just type in 0 0.01. Nope, that's y. Oh, x. Sorry. 0.01. Yep, hit enter. Perfect. Hit OK. Even though it's on the other face, this will work just fine. So, OK. Green check, yep. Now look at it from an isometric view. What I want you to do is I want you to go to the solids tool, the solids tab, go to extrude. And so now that the wireframe chaining dialog box has become visible, select one of the edges on the triangle. Yep, looks good, hit the green check. And you're gonna do cut body through all, flip the direction. Yep, zoom out a little bit. Looks good. Uh, see how it goes all the way through? Yes. Perfect. That's where you need to be. So you can hit okay and go to a shaded view. Look at it from an isometric view. And you can do, there you go. So you've got one instance of the tooth. So I'm going to go back to my screen. I'm going to get everybody caught up to where you're at. So you're just going to hang tight for a minute, okay? Sounds good. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so you should be able to see my screen now. Is everyone good? So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to extrude cut with this triangle. Okay, you guys should be able to see my screen. I'm going to go to solids, extrude. Brings up the wireframe chaining dialog box. I'm going to select one of the lines that represents the outside, um, represents the profile of the tooth. I'll select OK. Now, the settings from the last time that we used the extrude cut tool are still active. You might have to flip the direction. If you're not seeing a preview of the tooth or the cut of the cut being made, flip the direction. And once you see the cut go all the way through, select OK to exit the tool. Look at it from an isometric view and save your work. How's everyone doing? Good. Nice. Okay, so we need approximately, I think 38 more of these teeth. And I sure do not wanna go about that method of creating this tooth 
38 more times. Fortunately, there's a tool, it's called linear pattern that will allow us to create more instances of this tooth pretty quickly. So this is what we're gonna do. Is everyone good up to this point? We're gonna use a linear pattern tool. We're gonna to go to solids. And actually it's called a rectangular pattern. A different software is called linear pattern. So solids, rectangular pattern. It says select one or more solid features or operations to be copied. You can select them from the graphics window in the solids manager. Select one of the faces that was just created by that last cut that we made. And when you select it, a bunch of things become highlighted. But you're selecting, you gotta be careful, select one of the faces that were created from that last cut that we made. I selected this face. Once you do that, select okay. Zoom out a little bit. We're looking at the default settings in effect here. So I've got two more instances with an inch spacing. What we're gonna do, we need to control the pitch, the spacing from one tooth to the next. In the distance field, you see how the pitch here is, or the distance dimension is 0 0.0591. That's rounded to four decimal places. What I want you guys to do, click in the distance field. Now, what I'm about to show you works inside of SolidWorks and it also works inside of MasterCam. I believe it works in other CAD and CAM softwares too. I'm making a metric conversion. Type in 1.5 mm and then hit enter. So I typed in 1.5 mm, you hit enter and MasterCam is converting that to the inch decimal equivalent. And you can see that it's not a pretty number. It's many, it's quite a few decimal places. So type in 1.5 mm, hit enter. It converts it to inches for us. And then for the number of instances, you can increase it by hitting the up arrow. And you're gonna do that until you see this pattern extend beyond this edge right here. And it doesn't line up perfectly, but that's fine. And from past experience, I know that if I stop at 39, I have enough. So distance, 1.5 millimeters, number of instances, 39. From here, I'll select OK. I can look at it from an isometric view and I'll save my work. How's everyone doing? Yeah. Nice. All right, cool. Let's do this. Let's do a little bit of house cleaning and then we're gonna create the wireframe from the solid model. All the wireframe geometry is currently spread out over two levels, maybe more. Make the points level invisible. That, play, that leaves the points on that level. I want to select all wireframe geometry and put it on level one. To select all wireframe uh, geometry that's currently visible on my screen, go to the selection filter. And I'm going to use this one right here. Select all wireframe entities. Go to the home tab. In the organize section, select change level. I want to move all the selected items to level one. So I'll say, I can't use active level, so it's unchecked. Type in one, hit OK. I now have 21 entities on level one. If I toggle off the display, I'm sorry, if I toggle off or turn off the visibility of level one, the only thing that should be visible on my screen is a solid model. From here, I'll look at it from an isometric view and I'll save my work. How's everyone doing? Good. Nice. The last thing we'll do for this project tonight 
we're going to create the wireframe from the solid. Make the wireframe from solid level the active level. Let's change the wireframe color to something that we haven't used yet. So I'm going to change over to, let's say, this gold color right here. We'll see how that works. I might change it later on. But I'm changing the wireframe color to something that I haven't used yet in this session of Mastercam. Make the, so once again, the wireframe from solid level is the active level. Go to the wireframe tab. Select curve all edges. I'm going to triple click the solid part. And when I do that, the entire part becomes selected. I'll select end selection. And you can see entities being created on all the edges of the part. From here, I'll select OK. I can look at it from an isometric view. And I can save my work. And this is where I'm going to stop for tonight. Uh, next class, we'll create the material. We'll, re we'll place a new origin. And then we'll start machining the part.